Hello there, and welcome to my channel, Novice Modeling in the Midlife Crisis. My name is Andy, and today I'm doing a What's in the Box kit review for my monogram Rommel's Rod, the Desert Fox's Crazy Command Car in the 124th scale, designed by Tom Daniel. Now, you may have seen the um, previous video I did for this where I actually unpackaged this um, as it came from a seller in Switzerland. Cost me the princely sum of 152 Swiss francs, which roughly translates to about 139 pounds at the time, which I do realise is a rather ridiculous amount of money for a, um, a lump of plastic at the end of the day. But it is a rather spectacular and amazing kit, and the box art itself is pretty pretty damn awesome, I think you'll agree. Um, I've had a look on Scalemates, and this kit was originally produced in 1969, it went through a reboxing in 1970, and then it was re-released in 2009 and 2018. Um, there are not many of these available online. Um, I have been watching another one of them, which was available in the UK for sale, which was up for £199. Uh, that one actually had a barcode on it, so it's most definitely one of the issues from 2009 or 2018. Um, there is also one currently available in um, Germany, which is up for, I think it's around about, oh, it's £143 plus £13 postage. So that's slightly more than the money I paid. I'm not quite sure what the date on that one is. Um, so let's have a just quick look at the box and then we'll have a look at the um, instructions and the parts themselves. Uh, I'm just going to read this, we'll go over this again. Uh, talk about a wild and re -gone, re real gone dune buggy. Here's the granddaddy of them all. It's a World War II vintage half track command car that might have been used by the Desert Fox himself to prowl the shifting sands of the sinister Sahara. Nice use of alliteration there. Uh, powered by a supercharged Mercedes engine, it sports a Mercedes front end, half track rear, realistic machine guns, and bleached skeletons of the Desert Fox and his driver. Cement and paint not included. Copyright 1969 and 1974. So that, in theory, tells us that this box at least is a 1970s issue. And if we say it was you know, produced in 1974, what we're looking at is a 50-year-old box with a 50-year-old kit in it. So it's most definitely vintage antique. Um, I actually, I, mean, I love this. I, mean, I think it's so, it's so cool at the end of the day. Um, a guy called um, Yume Hop, who's one of my um, uh, viewers, he actually pointed this one out to me a couple of months ago and said, have you seen this kit? And I said, well, I, don't, I don't know. And I had a look on on um, eBay and I had a look at it and I saw, oh yeah, I do know this one. And I, I remembered um, watching a video of somebody building it like probably four or five months ago. And I looked at it and I thought, God, that's a lot of money. But I just really, I kind of had to have it. Um, so today is the... Um, 17th of August, and actually marks the six months this anniversary of me uh, starting this YouTube channel. So it's kind of like a sort of crazy present to myself, I suppose you could say. But enough about me and the box. Let's have a look at the instructions, which, as you can see, are nicely yellowed, 1970s style. Um, I'll read this bit out here. The Desert Fox was the name they gave to one of the best-known generals in the history of military warfare. General Erwin Rommel, the man who almost trapped the British at Dunkirk, took a mechanised armoured division to the shores of Africa. This now famous German Africa corps rolled over the barren wastes of the African desert like a powerful sandstorm, finally to be stopped at El Alamein in a wild brawl of tanks, guns, sands and howling wind. Like it. Rommel's Rod is Tom Daniels' version of what would have been the wildest command car ever built. More powerful than a Tiger tank and able to leap tall sand dunes in a single bound, Rommel's Rod, had it been seen by the Allies, may well have turned the tide of war. Just a thing every well-equipped general should own. Rommel's Rod is a real plum worth capturing. The eerie driver up front needs a skilled hand, bone, indeed, to control the enormous power delivered by to the half-track treads by the big, rumbling, supercharged straight-eight Mercedes-Benz engine. The roller bumper permits him to blast over obstacles that would otherwise hang up a machine like this. That's the roller, roller bumper. Armour plates Armour plate on the rear protects the rod during its lightning facts attacks and getaways. And Mauser MG34 machine guns are provided for both the driver and the general in case the going gets rough and he decides to squeeze off a few. <laughs> the general's plush seat is mounted atop mounted 
a topper deck made of extra ammo cases. His map table tends, tells him where he's at and his bony upraised finger indicates where he's going and as he directs his battalions. On the outside of the car is all the detail that makes the crazy command car fun to build. Extra gas guns, toolbox, extra track segments and body rear. Radio antenna and tow rings, in fact everything it takes to make this thundering machine a real showpiece for every modeler. Yeah, I reckon that's true. Uh, whether a car nut or military vehicle nut, every inch of this 9 inch model is packed with excitement. Just ask a general, the boys at the Oasis loved it. So the instructions are kind of basic, 70s style. Assembled engine, hmm. thin bead of cement. And we've got what's that, section one. Oh yeah, that's section one. Sorry, put the engine together. Section two, we're going to put the um, body to the chassis with the tracks on. Uh, section three, we're going to put the general in the back, his machine gun, this with this um, windscreen, a couple of extra jerry cans. Section four, we're going to put the driver in, and section five, we're going to put all the um, extra accessories on. So there's a quick scope through the instructions. Now let's have a look at some of the parts, which are, I mean, it's it's not it's not well well very well um, detailed at the end of the day, but I mean that's kind of the way the seventies go. Um, so this is the basic chassis. We've got a drive shaft here. Um, I think it goes that way up. So we're going to put the um, the body on top here. So there's our first piece, which will go there. Then we have the main body of the vehicle, which as you can see, it's got these rather nice flared wings. It's got space for a spare wheel. It's got an attached shovel. It's got an ammo carton here. Everything is attached. There's not really an awful lot to actually do. The doors obviously have some detail on them with hinges and what have you. Can't open them, but I suppose you could cut them down to have them open if you really, really wanted. I don't really think that's necessary though. So there's that piece. Doesn't appear to be any sort of flash or any sort of imperfections. All looks quite nice. It's got a very sort of hard plastic feel to it, which is pretty cool. So that goes on there like that. Here we have the inner seat compartment. Again, everything's kind of already in place, if you like. We've got the Rommel seat here. We've got a bunch of um, extra ammo cartons and we've got two very basic looking driver's seats in the front with a little space here for our gear shifter. And it goes in there like that. And then we come to this sprue, which is the tracks, which are one piece, very, very little assembly. I mean, this is very basic, obviously, at the end of the day. We've got the engine and some, uh, this is a uh, one of the arms. This is the general's arm. As we can see, he's got his um, uh, binoculars. Uh, we have, um, what's that there? Oh, that's the rear of his cap. We've got the skeleton face with the front of the cap. And we've got this looks looks like part of the transmission. And we have one light. The other light is loose and in this little baggie here. And we come to another sprue, which has our uh, rest of our engine and transmission. Um, this is going to be the central um, windshield. We've got a couple of wheels for the front with some very, very sort of basic... Oh no, that's a spare wheel, sorry. That's a spare wheel to go here with this rather splendid um, decal on it. We've got a couple of spare jerry cans. We've got a couple of MG34s. We've got our wheel, or sorry, our headlamp section. Don't know what that is. Possibly the... Oh, that's the roller that goes on the front. We've got these two side panels for the bonnet, which go here. We've got a couple of flags to go on the front also. And the uh, front windshield with some rather basic looking windscreen wipers. We then come to one of the more amusing parts, which is the two full skeletons that we get. Complete with boots. Interesting. Oh, there's a little tiny hole there in the uh, plastic. Never mind, we can fill that in. And here we have the driver with his full-on German military helmet. Uh, his head comes in two pieces, which you have to assemble together, just like uh, Erwin Rommel himself. Next, we come to the hood of the vehicle, which goes here. It's got the uh, strapping on it, which obviously depicted painted brown. So that goes on the front. 
we've got our two clear plastic windshield parts. There's a couple of minor scratches on this one, but never mind. So they go here and here. And then we have these rather bright and garish silver parts. And you can see there's some imperfections on here and on this, which I'm thinking that's a, it says Mercedes Benz on it. So that's obviously intended to be the top of the engine. We've got a very silver steering wheel, which we might have to change the colour of. And again, this looks like a these look like mechanical parts as well. Not too sure what these two silver parts here, but that's the that's obviously the gear stick. They could be the um, machine gun mounts, maybe. Not too sure. We then get our decal sheet, which comes complete with a full console display, some German flags, this sign that says Abstand Holton. Uh, not too sure what that says. And we've got a couple of other staffle, which I'm assuming is staff. And we have the famous um, kind of sort of a uh, DAC uh, symbol here. We also get two faux rubber uh, tyres, which are very hard. Uh, there's no cracking or any damage to them, which is kind of nice. It's got some nice tread on the tyres as well. And that basically is all the parts and the instructions complete. So... I kind of hope you like this. Um, I mean, it is a ridiculous amount of money to pay for a lump of plastic or some lumps of plastic at the end of the day, and I do realise that. Uh, I've got no great intention of, of building it anytime soon because it's you know so expensive, but I think it's the kind of kit that you know I'm definitely going to build at some point. I just need to know that I'm not going to um, make a bit of a make a mess of it at the end of the day. But putting it together does seem to be rather simple. It's just making sure I get a good um, finish on the paint. So I'm going to do a few sort of practice 135 kits over the next couple of months. And maybe sometime, you know, towards Christmas or the New Year, I might actually have a go at making this. Um, so, like I've said, um, we're currently going through a bit of a sort of six months anniversary for my channel. And I'm going to be re-releasing a couple of my first two videos that I released, which were haul unboxings, which were quite successful at the time. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a cynical cash, cash grab at the end of the day because um, I do actually get paid pennies, pennies, I'm talking about pennies now for um, releasing videos. It actually takes quite a few, quite a few viewers actually just to, to get a penny. So the amount of money that's actually earned will hopefully keep me in a paint and glue for the next couple of years and it may go some way to taking some chips out of the money i've actually um, spent on kits as well so i'll be release, releasing a couple of videos and there'll be um, just some of my favorite kits which i've been releasing uh, re releasing over the past few days so please do have a look at those and next week after we've got over this craziness we're going to um, try and finish our 135 panther that we started ooh, about two weeks ago now so please do like and subscribe and please do um continue to watch my rather insane view on modeling which is based from a rather excitable childlike novice point of view and i'll be reviewing and building a lot more kits in the future um, i have roughly 400 kits at the moment i think it is um so i reckon i've got enough uh, kits now to last me for around about eight years so i'll be around on youtube for a while thanks for watching please do like and subscribe like i say and be seeing you